hello everyone welcome to topper is so as part of our daily series today also we will look into few of the news that is taken from your hindu as well as pib okay so let's get started so the first one is with respect to drone rules okay see earlier uh, we have also already discussed uh, something called unmanned aircraft system rules 2021 which were notified on March 12, 2021. Why did we discuss? Because uh, there was an attack on Indian Air Force Station in the Jammu using drones, right? So, as a part of security issues, we had discussed in detail with respect to internal security and all. So, unmanned aircraft system rules were in news. But now, government has come out with, you know, new rules, a simpler drone rules, okay? So, Ministry of Civil Aviation has released the draft drone rules 2021 for public consultation until August 5 and these simplified drone rules will abolish the need for large number of approvals and give imputers to research and development. So, the rules will replace the unmanned aircraft system rules which were notified in March 12. So, because there was a uh, issue concern raised that the large number of approvals are needed as part of unmanned aircraft system rules. So, to address those all issues, government has now simplified the rules and they have asked for public consultation again. So, you know, uh, drones are the next, you know, are bringing next big tech revolution around the globe. How they are bringing the revolution because of, uh, you know, uh, benefits like reduced cost resources and time taken for the operations so given such benefits the drones give government is also coming out with the rules to facilitate the usage of drones in india okay so that is why it was in news keep track of this once the rules come after the consultation we will discuss the rules in detail okay then next one is with respect to you know notice issued to three member of parliamentarians under anti-defection law so lok sabha secretariat uh, has issued the notices to three members uh, who are they is not important for us what is important for us is anti-defection law so anti-defection law is included in the constitution 10th schedule uh, uh, it was included in the year 1985 okay what is the main purpose of including this anti-defection law is to preserve the stability of government and insulate them from the defect defecting legislators see what was happening is uh, people were you know uh, very readily changing the political alliances they were shifting from one party to other party just to gain certain political positions and all such kind of things but this kind of you know defecting by the members lead to political instability fall of government and all those things so to uh, to address such a issue anti-defection law was included in the constitution so what the law says is if uh, any member of parliament or the state legislature he will be disqualified from their office if they voted on any motion contrary to the directions of the issued party okay so if you are defecting and uh, your actions are against the party then the member will be likely to be disqualified so that is the uh, significance of anti-defection law know the factual stuff that it was added included in the constitution as part of 10th schedule in the year 1985 okay so there are concerns with anti-defection law also uh, effectiveness of anti-defection law what are all the loopholes because the law continues to be misused and all those stuff political instability still it is present right so we are saying preserve the stability of government but still political instability is present then was the law not successful so if we will analyze these things in our mains discussion okay then government kickstarts lic's initial public offering process so initial public offering you know the first time the shares are being issued in the public okay then kickstarting the process of lic disinvestment government has invited bids from merchant bankers and legal advisors for advising it on the proposed mega initial public offer so the terms is disinvestment you should know disinvestment is where you know um, government sells a part of its stake in the public center and public sector enterprises okay so now government is going ahead with the disinvestment in lic life insurance corporation for the first time okay so that is nothing but initial public offering and it has sought the advice of merchant bankers so merchant bankers are institutional bankers who are giving you know financial advice and all those stuff 
so department of investment and public asset management nothing but deepam which is concerned with disinvestment right so would appoint up to 10 merchant bankers and one legal firm for assisting uh, for assisting and advising on the stake sale so that is nothing but work of merchant bankers to assist and advise on the stake sale and listing of lic is crucial for the center as it aims to raise 1.75 lakh crore in financial year 2022 from minority stake sales and privatization so government has to raise the revenue right so it intends to raise the revenue pa uh, uh, a certain components through disinvestment process okay so uh, that is how the lic disinvestment becomes significance for the government in order to raise the money then next is with respect to external affairs ministry so uh, our external present external affairs minister yes jay shankar and uh, chinese minister wang have differed on their way forward for india china ties actually uh, these uh, people met along the sidelines of seo meeting that is going on so what was the comment made by indian external affairs minister was the impasse the tussle that is happening along the line of actual control was visibly impacting the relationship in a negative manner so this was the comment made by india's external affairs minister whereas the chinese minister was uh, giving a stark different message what he said that place the border issue in an appropriate position so meaning uh, it is uh, like a signifying that they are not that bothered to end the uh, tussle that is going along the line of actual control okay so they held this meeting on the sidelines of seo meeting then you should know basic stuff related to shanghai cooperation organization right so shanghai cooperation organization is a eurasian meaning european and asian countries so it is a eurasian political economic and security alliance which was formed in the year 2001 actually there were initially five members so it was called shanghai five group then later on uzbekistan joined it so since then it has become shanghai cooperation organization and now the membership also has expanded to include eight states so presently there are eight states so recently india and pakistan have joined seo as a full members in the year 2017 so where the when the summit was held in astana kazakhstan okay now the members uh, you have china russia india pakistan uzbekistan kazakhstan kyrgyzstan and tajikistan these are the eight members because uh, questions are being asked in upsc like they asked with respect to g20 right members so upsc prelims you can expect a question you never know so that's it for today you can download the pdf of this uh, document in the link that is shared below and do download topperize institute app so that you get access to n number of these videos okay thank you